welcome to today's broadcast of Because He Is. I'm Judy Capshaw, Senior Pastor of Preach Unto Them Jesus Church in Oklahoma City. And we are glad you joined us today. I want to continue where we left off on our last broadcast and we were talking about the Kingdom of God. There are five scriptures that I want to uh, go over again with you real quick. Those are the basic scriptures that if you build on those and if you put those in your heart and allow God to give you truth and revelation, it sol uh, solidifies your walk. It helps you with your, your experience in Christ and lets your witness be true and honest before the Lord and before, before mankind. The first one is Matthew 24, 14. That scripture says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. Back in the 80s, that gospel was coming, the, the kingdom of God, but it was almost like heresy. I can remember people preaching the kingdom of God, the authority of God, the power of God, and it was like people were scared to death because we're going out on a limb or we're going out on a tangent or we're preaching something that shouldn't uh, have any relevance today. But I tell you, today, if you'll listen to the ministers on, on uh, the TV stations, the ministers on cable, you're going to find out that the gospel of the kingdom of God is being ministered and preached all over the world. It's time. This is our hour and this is our day. And it says when that gospel is preached, then is the end going to come. But that gospel is a witness. It's a sign that people that have experienced it, you cannot be a witness to something that you have not seen, that you have not experienced, that you have not had any contact with. So the gospel of the kingdom, that witness, goes into all the world as, as a sign that the Lord's return is coming nigh. Now we've had a lot of gospels preached in times past. We've had healing. We've had holiness. We've had faith. We've had prosperity. We've had salvation. We've had all of those wonderful uh, truths preached to the body of Christ. But all of that is encapsulated in kingdom living and in kingdom life. And we need to understand, you know, we call Christianity a religion, a uh, religion of, of grace and salvation. But the thing about it is Christianity is a way of life. It's, it's a walk. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. And when we come into that place where we have that relationship, where we are one with the Father, and we, we understand that and we know that, then it, it causes us, to, our whole lives change. Everything about us changes and, and it just brings us to a place that we're not moved by what we see or, or hear, but we're, we're solid in this walk with God. Um, I admonished you the last time on the last broadcast to study the, the Gospels, the four Gospels, because in those you're going to find out that Jesus Christ only preached the kingdom. The religious people hated him, didn't like it, wanted to destroy him, because he was telling them and showing them and teaching them, it's not by law, it's not by rule, it's not by regulation, it's not by the do's and the don'ts, it's by relationship that God has given to his people that power and that anointing to walk as he is in this earth today. Second scripture I want to give you was Luke 16, 16. And it says, until John came, there was the law and the prophets. And since then, the good news of the gospel of the kingdom of God is being preached. And everyone strives violently to go in, would force his own way in rather than God's way. There's only one way to walk this walk, and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not by your good work. It's not by your good intentions. It's not by uh, following all the rules. It's through grace, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that gospel is good news. And this is what I'm praying that we bring to you today and, and in the days to come. Because God's raising up a mighty people. He's raising up an army of believers. And it's up to us to choose who are we going to serve, what are we going to do, how are we going to live this life. Uh, so long the body of Christ has taught hellfire and damnation and you know it probably has caused a lot of people to get saved but are they staying serving the Lord are they staying committed to God if you serve somebody out of fear there's going to come a time and a place where that way of life that that um, fear spirit of fear just won't cut it, won't work. It's out of love that God wants us to come. So the gospel is good news. It's the joy of the Lord. It's the peace of God. It's the love that God has for his people. And when we understand that and we get to the place of being committed to the things of God, your whole life changes. And God can use you in a powerful way. He wants all of us, the 
call on the name of Jesus to be effective in the earth to be productive in the things he's called us to do. We only have one life, guys. We're only going through this life one time. And if we mess it up and blow it and, and do our own thing, we're going to come to the end of our days and it's going to be like, man, I wish I'd done things differently or I wish I'd have made a different choice or gone a different path. I wish I had listened to the Spirit of God. So my, my heart is to encourage the body of Christ. You have one time in this earth and some of us are closer to the end of this thing than we are to the beginning. So everything that we do needs to be effective in the kingdom of God. It needs to be effective in the body of Christ. And we can only do that when we realize and understand that we're one with the Father, that the Holy Spirit of God lives in us, and that His desire is for us to fulfill the will of God in this earth. The world needs to see they need to see the witness of Christ. They need to see the power of God. They need to see the anointing and the love of God manifested through his people. So we're the ones that are going to do it. And I pray you'll pick up that challenge and that charge and get with it. And let's walk this walk together. Third scripture, Luke uh, 17, 20 and 21. It says, As by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he replied to them by saying, The kingdom of God does not come with signs to be observed or with visible display. Nor will people say, Look, here it is, or see, it is there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you, in your hearts, and among your surroundings. Jesus Christ placed everything within us as born-again people that pertains to life and godliness. And when we begin to understand that we are spirit, we are spirit, we are not, this body is our temporal housing, it's a temporary uh, house that we're gonna live in, but this is not going to heaven. This thing is not gonna be per perfected and pleasing in all aspects of our journey through here. So the body of Christ has got to come to this truth and the revelation, and I'm sure most everybody knows that, that we are a spirit being. We're connected to the Father God by the Holy Spirit, by the, the grace of God that he gave us by being born again of the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. So the kingdom of God came on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost of God fell upon the disciples because the kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit. So that kingdom is within us. We've got to learn to live out of our inner man, out of our spirit being, out of that well of water, that living stream that comes from within us to the world. We've got to learn that that's our life. That's where we need to live from and out of. And this is what the Lord is trying to teach us as a body of believers. The flesh is weak and it tells us in Romans that sin was condemned in the flesh. So this transition of coming into Christ, no longer being carnal Christians or operating by our intellect, but operating by the Spirit of God. So where is the kingdom? It's within you. It's within me. Those of us that are born again by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. So our job then is to release the power, the anointing, the presence, the love, the attitude, the nature of God through us so that the world can see our God is real. You know, you think about all of the voices in the world today. I'm telling you, there's so many different religions and so many different paths and so many different ways that people are being encouraged to go. But there's only one way. There is only one name given among men whereby we might be saved. There's only one cross and one blood and one son, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And he has made a way for us to be redeemed, not just to make it to heaven. Thank God we're going to heaven. But redeemed to be as he is in this earth. To be as he is in this world so that the world can see our God is real. Our God is alive. Our God is vibrant. Our God is not somebody that's afar off. He's not a mist. He's not some fake thing. But our God is real in the hearts and lives of his people. And God is raising up a standard and raising up a people that are bold and are, that are going to be courageous and audacious to speak out the things of God. Our God is love. He's mercy. He's compassion. He's not mean and he's not a, a beheader or a killer or a, if you don't go our way, you're going to get killed. That's not our God. But God is raising up a people that are also very valiant and very uh, victorious in their walk and in their things of God. So you're, the kingdom is within you and it's within me. The thing is, what are we doing and allowing the kingdom to manifest and come forth? 
Are we just shutting it up, putting a lid on it, shutting the door, and being religious? Hallelujah. The world has seen enough religion to last a lifetime. They need to see a relationship. They need to see a people that know their God and stand with their God and hear the voice of their God and move out when God says to move out and do what God calls them to do. So that's, that's the kingdom we're talking about. Next scripture, number four, Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom is not a natural phenomenon. It's not a flesh work, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy. And I want you to look at that just a minute because righteousness, peace, and joy is progressive. If you're not in right standing with God, and believe me, you're not ever going to make yourself right standing. I don't care how hard, how hard you work. I don't care how many times you cross the T, dot the I. You are not going to make yourself in right standing with God. So we're going to cover that today in the next broadcast. But it's progressive. Righteousness brings peace. Peace brings joy. Now think about that. If you don't know that you are the righteousness of God, you're not going to have any peace. You're always going to be in torment. You're going to be in turmoil. You're always going to be wondering about, am I saved? Can I stay saved? Am I going to walk in salvation? You're always going to have that question in your heart and your life and always be condemning yourself when you miss the mark. There's no peace in that. But when you realize the righteousness that is the gift of God and you walk in that, then you have peace. Peace is unity with God. That's that tranquility and that sweetness of His presence that brings harmony to your life. And when you have that, the next step then is joy. Because in the presence of God is fullness of joy. And at His right hand are pleasures forevermore. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So this walk that we're walking with the Lord, it's progressive. And truth upon truth, line upon line, precept upon precept, when you understand that if we get the foundation right, as the scriptures say that if the foundation be destroyed, what will the righteous do? You can't build on a faulty foundation. You can't build on religion. You can't build on the do's and the don'ts and the law. You build your foundation on the Lord Jesus Christ, His grace, His love, His mercy, and His righteousness. And that is the foundation key for the kingdom of God. And we're going to go into that um, truth here because that's where your power comes from. And when you begin to see what God is doing, it sets you free. I'm telling you, we should be the most joyful, happy people in the world because we're not under the law. We're not under legalism. We don't have to worry about sin because I guarantee you, if you sin, the Holy Ghost is going to jump right on you and let you know it. And you're not going to be able to get away with things that are displeasing to God. That's the freedom of serving the Lord. All right. The next scripture and the last one here is, oh, wait a minute. I want to go to Isaiah 32, 17. Let's go back up here just a minute with me. Isaiah 32, 17 says, And the work of righteousness shall be peace. What is the work of righteousness? Peace. All right. And the effect of peace or the effect of righteousness, is quietness and assurance forever. So righteousness does a work within your inner man, within your spirit man. And the effect of that righteousness brings quietness and assurance forever. Assurance of your salvation. You know, when I first got saved, I uh, got filled with the Holy Ghost, and man, I was, in a, I was in a ministry, and it was tough. It was hard. Every time they preached a sermon, I went to the altar and cried because I didn't know whether I was going to make it to heaven or not. So every service, I never had an assurance of my salvation. And I was always knowing. I knew I missed the mark because I knew that it, within me, there wasn't any way I was going to live that life. And every time I'd go to the altar, I'd cry and I'd pray and I'd ask God to forgive me and God save me. And I'll tell you what, I went through that so many times until finally the Lord brought me out of that ministry, thank God. And I began to realize that there is a place of peace. There is a place of knowing that it isn't what we do. It's everything he's done. This gospel is not about us. This gospel is about Jesus Christ and His love and His mercy and His willingness to go to the cross and shed His blood so that we could be welcomed, not just into eternity and into the gates of heaven, but that we would have a life here on this earth that is filled with joy and victory and power and anointing and the presence of God and doing the works that Jesus Christ did in the greater works, if we dare to believe that. And we dare to come into that place that God wants us to come into. So with that, I want us to go 
to a um, scripture. We're going to start talking about the righteousness of God because that is the kingdom. And we're going to get into that here before very long on our next broadcast probably that we'll come into uh, studying on the righteousness of God because with that truth you have the knowledge of knowing then that you don't walk in condemnation. You don't walk in guilt. You don't walk second guessing or the fear of man. It's the power of God. I want to share a story with you though real quick um, talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit and what God does. There was a time in my life, and I was in my late 20s, and it was a very um, hard place for me, really, because I was unhappy. I was in an unhappy marriage. I, nothing was going right. And I wanted to escape. I just, I didn't want to make the decisions I had to make to get out of the situation, but I just wanted to escape it. So I would go to uh, the discount store, the little drug store type thing. It was called TGNY back then. I'm dating myself, but that was who, who we had back in the day. And I would go through there and I'd get all these little romance novels. Uh, and it wasn't porn and it wasn't uh, sexy. It's just, it was just the sweet, you know, the prince comes and Prince Charming is here and the princess gets carried away and they live happy ever after forever and love each other and I would read those little books and read those little books and escape the situation I was in by by living through those stories and one day the spirit of the, and I mean I, let me tell you I could read one every night a book of it every night because it, it just met what I, I was trying to do to get my life better but one day the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said I want you to put those books down I don't want you reading those anymore and I, I said well Okay, Lord, I, I, I can agree with that. I see what you're, you're trying to do. So I gathered them all up, took them to the, to the dumpster and threw them away. And I was really good for a period of time. And um, it, it worked really well. And then one day I was back in TGNY and the Spirit of the Lord was leading me. But I heard another voice saying, come over here and look. Come over here and look and browse around just a minute. Well, instead of heeding the Holy Ghost, I said, oh, okay, I'll just go look. Well, I went to the book section, and I found I don't know how many books that I hadn't read. I said, oh, well, I could read this one and this one and this one. I haven't read those. So I bought them, and I took them home, and I began to read. I got back in that same position, that same place that I was when God spoke to me the first time. And escape not dealing with reality, not wanting to deal with the situation in my life. And one day, as I was driving, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to my heart and He said, I'm going to tell you something. I've asked you to put those books down and not to read them anymore. And I'm not going to tell you again, and I'm not going to ask you again. And if you harden your heart to me in this area, I will never deal with you in that area again. But what you will have done is allow yourself to be having all kinds of things come in on you in that part of your heart that you, that you took and withheld me from. And when the Spirit of the Lord spoke that, it put such a, I tell you, fear, reverent fear in my heart and in my life. And I felt such a coldness from God. And it, it was to that place that I knew that if I was not obedient to do what He told me to do, and if I did not heed the voice of God at this time, he wouldn't deal with me about that anymore. And he would turn me over to my own reprobate mind, to my own desires, my own self. So from that point, I threw the books away. And thank God that's been, I don't know, dozens of years ago. But I have not had that temptation again. And I'm, I'm telling you this so that you understand. This walk that we have with Jesus Christ is by the Spirit of God. We're not going to follow the law and all of the legalism that, that, that religion wants to put us under. But the law of God is written on our heart. And when the Holy Spirit begins to talk to us and begins to admonish us and direct us, He gives us the opportunity to say yes or no. And I guarantee you, if you've ever had the Holy Ghost turn kind of silent in your life, you'd never want that. It's such a, a coldness and a feeling of being left. But I'm, I just want to, uh, the, the body of Christ to understand this walk with Jesus is this relationship. We can trust in the Lord. We can trust Him to do in our lives everything that He wants to do in our lives. I'd like to read to you a, a scripture. It's actually, it's not a scripture. It's an encouragement from a young woman in our church, Janet Villanueva. 
And she says this, and it's so true today. It says, if someone offers to help us, but we don't accept their help, we are left to do it on our own, without help. This does not mean we didn't have help. It means we didn't accept help. It's the same with our Lord. Jesus came to save us, heal us, provide for us, give us good success, and etc. If we don't accept him and accept that he's our savior, our healer, our provider, our good success, how can he show himself and be that for us? We have to accept before we have. If you don't accept what God is doing, if you don't receive it and agree to it and answer yes to it and admit to it and reconcile yourself to it, if you don't receive what he's doing, how will it ever help you? He's there. He's saying, I'm giving you a life in this earth. I'm giving you a relationship with God the Father through, through the blood, through the Son. Now it's up to us. Do we want to receive it? Do we want to accept it? If we do, then that turns God loose to do everything in our life that He needs to do and that He wants to do to cause us to be a success and to be prosperous and to be happy and to be victorious. If we don't accept it, if we believe that it's just too good to be true, and we can't really um, embrace the good news of the gospel, and we think we have to earn it or labor for it or be good enough for it or get religious to have it, then we've missed the mark. This walk is exciting and it's, it's tremendous what God is doing. And I want us to pray right now that God will encourage you. And if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that's the only way you're gonna have this relationship. The only way you're going to be able to come to the Father is through the blood. But in that, there is not only eternal life, but there is the most exciting life to live in this earth. So if you will, let's pray together and let's believe that whatever you have need of, God is going to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word of God. I thank you, Father, that you're raising up a mighty army of believers. I thank you, Father, that those are some that are standing on the outside looking to come in. Father, I ask you to open up that door, Father, and bring them into the fullness of the Spirit of God. Father, those that don't know you, but that desire to know you, Lord, I thank you that they will be drawn to the presence of God. All you have to do, saints, to come to Christ is to just receive Him as the Son of God. Receive the blood. Receive His, His forgiveness for your sin. He's not taking an inventory on your sin. He just wants you to come to a personal relationship with Jesus. And you do that by inviting Him into your heart and into your life to be your Lord, to be your Savior, to take control and dominion of your life. Don't waste another day. Today is your day. Let God do it. And don't, don't cut Him off today. Let Him have His way in your heart and in your life. You'll find success there and you'll be excited and happy that you did. Stay tuned for part two on the righteousness of God. We'll see you next time on the next broadcast. This is Judy Capshaw, Senior Pastor of Preach Unto Them Jesus. You go and be blessed today. Yes, my name is Cliff Red Elk, and I was hesitant about giving my testimony today until you mentioned 20, Jeremiah 29 11. It was actually on a TV show that I seen last night, and I took that as a sign that I needed to speak a little bit. Well, they say the Lord works in mysterious ways, and I, I find that to be true because my daughter was dedicated here, my great nephew was dedicated here about a month and a half ago, and ever since, every Saturday, my daughter, we're going to church tomorrow, Dad, we're going to church tomorrow, and I said, yes, we are. So she is pretty much, I'd say drag, but almost dragged me here, you know, and I'm glad that she did because I'm really starting to work on my, my temple, my body, because I was in the hospital, in, uh, the Indian hospital for Christmas night until January 5th with an infection. So I've been getting physically active and working on my eating, my body. Like I said, I'm getting my temple, the physical going. And now through her and Jesus working through her, it's helping me also work on my spiritual. And I'm just really enjoying it. I'm loving the people here loving the praise and the, and, the, and the worship and just I just want to just say anybody out there if you're hesitant about it and you feel something pulling you somebody that you may not expect asking you whatever just give in to it it'll be worth it in the long run amen hey my name is Mickey Banks and I'd like to testify for Christ uh, when I was a child I was raised in somewhat of a, a real troubled childhood uh, with a lot of drugs and alcohol and violence and uh, when I was about 12 years old my mom and I had 
kind of always clashed, it had a conflict. And she called me into her room one day and she asked me uh, if I had seen her do something, which I had, but naturally I didn't cop to it. I said, no, I hadn't seen nothing. And she said, you're lying. And she looked at me and she says, I, I hate you. I've always hated you and I never will love you. And I was about 12 years old and at, at, in, at that time, something inside of me felt like it, I died. And I just got madder and madder at God and I got angry at God and I blamed him for everything in my life. And uh, I would go outside and raise my fists and, and curse him when I was a teenager. And then uh, uh, one day I met a girl, which was my wife now. We've been married 43 years. And, uh, and she, uh, I was, going over to a buddy of mine's house and I climbed over the uh, banister we was out on the balcony uh, sunning with my with our son we was living together we weren't married and I was going over to a buddy of mine's house and I jumped over the banister and I almost fell and my girlfriend at the time screamed and grabbed her mouth and I, I remember looking at her and it stunned me because here I am about 20 years old and I never felt that feeling that I felt. And I was walking with my buddy and I says, you know, Jim, she was afraid I was gonna fall. And he started laughing at me and he goes, well, you big dummy, she loves you. And it was, I was so stunned by that statement because I thought, how could she love me? My own mother didn't love me. And as soon as I was walking, God spoke to me and said, for I love you too, for I am love. And, and I thought I was going crazy because of this voice talking to me. But later on, as I come to know, that voice was Christ and he saved my soul and showed me what true love was. And that's why I want to testify that if you are absent love in your life, Christ is the one that is the one true love that's looking for you. Amen.